Welcome back everyone. So this week we're going to talk about uh, starting Python programming and our goal is to write a service that can run on your computer. So we've already talked about business services um, and now we're going to talk about actually how to create them by writing your own program. And uh, Python uh, is just a language that you can use to write or program your computer. Uh, and there's lots of different programming languages out there, but Python's relatively easy to get started with. And last week you saw how to install Python on your computer. So before we get started this week, uh, the first thing you need to do is make sure that Python is running. The easiest way to do that is to open a terminal, or in Windows it would be a command line, but it's basically this black window here where you can type commands in. And um, if you type Python, then you should get something running. So here it just says Python uh, is running, and then I know that it's running correctly because it actually started up. Uh, if nothing happens or it says that the command cannot be found, then you haven't installed Python correctly, then you need to go back and uh, look at the video last week about how we install Python. Now the second thing to check is the version of Python that you have installed. So if I type Python dash dash version, into the command line, so Python version into the command line, then uh, by default I have Python 2.7 installed. And in Linux and OS X it might have two different versions installed. Uh, what we want is the newest version, Python 3. Um, so if I type Python 3 dash dash version, then you can see that I also have Python 3.6 installed. So um, by default in Linux you'll have uh, at least for a while, you'll have Python 2 installed and Python 3 installed. Make sure any new programs that you're starting with, you're using Python 3 to run them. Uh, that way you're always using the newest version. So I would have to type Python 3, but for most people, especially today, whenever we're just getting started, it doesn't really make a difference. We can type Python or Python 3. Okay. If you're on Windows, which most people are, uh, whatever program you chose to install, that should be the only Python version on your computer. Um, normally Windows doesn't come installed uh, with Python installed. Okay, so now the next thing, uh, I am in a folder right now, and if you look in the folder, I have one file called hello.py. This .py is a file extension that means it's a Python script or a Python program. So I have a file called hello, and then .py means Python program. And I just have something kind of like Notepad or Memo opened up, um, a basic text editor. It's nothing special. You don't need special tools to start programming. You can do it pretty much with anything. Um, so uh, I yeah, open up Python or sorry, open up Notepad, and then uh, we can just start programming directly before we uh, get any any special programming tools. Okay. So I have a file called hello.py. And that lets the computer know that um, this is a Python program. Uh, and I'll show you how to run that in a second. But then I have the empty file um, up here. Okay. So getting started with your first program, um, Python is a really simple language. So normally the way that we begin is just by printing something on uh, the screen. So if we run the program, then we want something to um, show on the screen in the terminal. Okay, so if I just want to print something on the screen, all I have to do is type print, and then we'll say hello world. Okay, so here, um, this is the entire command. We have something to do, which is usually a verb, like I have the command here print, as in uh, display something, and then inside quotes, double quotes, I have a string that I want to print. So we have some action that we want to do and then what to do or what should go into the action. So here, print in quotes, double quotes. Let me see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. Yeah, okay. So print and then in double quotes, hello world. And that's it. So anything that's inside these double quotes should run. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that and then go back to my command line there's my file. So now I want to run the program and you might think that's not very much 
code to be in a program, but that's actually all we need to start our program. So now I can just type Python and then hello.py. And that basically says use Python to run this script. Okay, so use Python to run this script. So what do you expect to happen? Well, the only thing that we're asking it to do is to print out the text, hello world. So that's hopefully what we expect. Okay. So I hit enter and then notice that it does print out hello world, but it does not have the double quotes. So print printed everything inside these double quotes. And I can change this to be whatever I want. So hello Python. So instead of hello world, change it save the script, run the program again, and then we have hello Python printed instead of hello world. So whatever is inside these double quotes is what will be printed onto the screen, okay? So that's a very basic program, and honestly, it's not very uh, useful unless you just want to give messages, uh, a single message to someone over and over again. You can just keep running that. Um, so let's do something a little bit more. Uh, Normally, whenever we are printing something or we want to run a program, the program should change depending on some sort of input. Okay, so every time we run the program, depending on the state of the system or depending on uh, something that's going on, we want to change what we do or change the output. So if I just type hello Python or if I print hello Python over and over again, it's not very useful. But if I, um, for example, change the name, depending on who's running the program, then I could say, hello, Joshua. And that might be interesting depending on what you're trying to do. So the way that we do that is to use something called a variable. And just like in your math classes, um, you've probably gone through variables where, for example, x equals something, right? And x, the value of x can change over time. Well, programming really relies on variables a lot too. So uh, for example, the name example, we can have a variable called name, okay? So this variable is a container that holds some value. Uh, and we make it a variable by saying name equals, and I'll just, I'll just do it like this, Joshua. So name equals Joshua. So now we're basically saying uh, this variable, this container called name has a value of Joshua inside these quotes. So everything inside the double quotes. Okay. Um, and then if we want to print, now we can go back to our print statement, print, and then let's say we want to print hello. Well, how do we print uh, some sort of text? Like we always want to print hello, and that's not going to change, but we want to change this variable maybe every time or every so often. We can just do plus name. Okay, so now we're printing hello plus whatever is in the variable called name. What's in the variable called name? Joshua. So what if we run this program, what should happen? Uh, first, it will print out hello Python, and then it will print out hello, and then whatever the value of this variable is. So let's go ahead and run that. So hello Python, that was this first text that printed. And then we have hello Joshua, which is the second text that printed. But notice um, in the second uh, line, there's no space between hello and Joshua. Why is that? Well, Python doesn't actually know that these are two different words. It could just be any text that you're trying to put together. This plus sign, whenever you're talking about text or strings, is concatenation or putting two things together. Okay, It's not math where we're doing some sort of math on the two different strings. It's concatenating both strings together. But Python doesn't know what the values of uh, hello Joshua mean. Like it doesn't know English basically. Okay, So we have to explicitly tell it that we want a space in the middle of that. Now there's a couple different ways to do it, but the easiest way is just go to our string, hello, and then put a space at the end. So now we're adding a space character to the string and then keeping our name string. So if we run it again, now we have our space, okay? So whenever the variable is a string, which is a collection of characters, 
if we are using the plus sign, we are adding two strings together. So name will go at the end of hello. And we can keep going. We can add something like uh, ex exclamation point. Okay. So now we'll have hello, a space, and then the name, whatever our variable contains, and then an exclamation point. So we can concatenate as many different times as we want. And there we go. So there's the uh, Joshua is the contents of the variable, and then we have the exclamation point at the end. Okay, so you might be thinking, well, that's exactly the same. Why don't I just type Joshua? Well, the easy thing is I don't have to change this entire string or find the entire string, and now I can change it to, um, uh, let's say, Jill. Okay, so I can just change the variable one time, and what do you expect to happen? Instead of hello Joshua, it prints out hello Jill. So what we can end up doing, let's say I have something uh, like this, where I have name equals Joshua, and then name equals Jill, and then I print. What do you expect to print out uh, uh, to be the contents of name? Well, if we run it again, we can see it says, hello, Jill. And the reason is we first assigned Joshua to the variable, and then we overwrote the variable with Jill. So we've removed Joshua and added Jill to the variable and then print it out. So if we copy this uh, printing line, okay, so now we have name equals Joshua, and then we have print, and then we have name equals Jill, and then we print. So now we have three lines, hello Python, hello Joshua, hello Jill. Now notice the variable has been changing, so the result of printing out is also changing. And later, um, in a later um, uh, class, we'll be talking about how to ask the user for their name and actually get an input or get the input from somewhere else, okay? Um, for now, just know that we can create a variable called basically anything we want as long as we say the variable equals, and then in this case, we are assigning it the value of a string, okay? So just like we're talking about strings, um, since we're using plus signs, you might've thought that we might be doing uh, math, and you definitely can do math. That's a big part of um, programming. You might need to do different math calculations sometimes. So let's go ahead and add a little math, um, basic math in here. So let's do x equals 1 and x, uh, y equals 2. Okay. Now notice, um, whenever I say x equals 1, I'm not putting 1 inside double quotes. So 1 is actually a number instead of a um, variable. Okay. <clears throat> and that'll come in handy, or that'll be that'll be important later because um, sometimes, or at least for numbers, you might want to do math on them. So we have to treat them a little bit differently. If something is a string, we don't need to do math on it. So think of your phone number, for example. Your phone number, you're probably not doing math with a phone number, but you want to make or you keep it as an entire string of numbers. Um, yeah, so we'll talk about more about data types later, but um, strings, basically we don't do math on, and numbers we do math on. So in this case, we have x equals one, and there's no quotes around it, so I know that this is a um, integer value. y equals two, that's also an integer value. So I have two integers that I could do math with, okay? So let's do z equals uh, x plus y. Oops, x plus y. Okay, now just like before, we have x plus y, just like hello plus name. But because these two values are integers, then x plus y should work like a normal addition problem, and z should equal what? z should equal 3, because we're just adding 2 plus 1. Okay, so now let's go ahead and print uh, z. Save that. So what we should get is hello Python, hello Joshua, and then uh, three, just the number three. Okay. 
And that's what we get. So hello Python, hello Joshua, and then the number three. Now to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about here, um, basically if you don't use quotes, it, Python treats the number like an actual number. If you do use quotes, it treats it like a string. So um, let's try real quick. X equals one in quotes and Y equals uh, two in quotes. Z equals equals uh, X plus Y print C. Okay. So now I'm treating both of these as strings instead of numbers. Let's see what happens. Okay. So here we have 12 and three. In the first case, we had one, but it's a string and a two and it's a string. And we're using the plus sign, which is concatenation. So it's saying one concatenate with two equals 12. And then in the second case, we're actually treating them as the real values or the real numbers, integers. So we're actually doing math with this x plus y. So um, one of the most difficult things and actually most programming languages is thinking about the uh, types of data that you're working with and how that affects um, what you can do with them. So basically you can, let's say at the most basic level, um, if something is a string, uh, you can't do math on it, but you can concatenate it and treat it like uh, text. If something is uh, not double quoted, then it's most likely an integer and you can do math with it. Okay. Right. So that's uh, about what I wanted to show you today. Um, so we have first printing just basic text. You can print anything inside the double quotes. Next is creating a variable. So anything name equals and the variable definition is always on the left so name equals that means that name is the variable so you cannot write it for example in quotes joshua uh, equals name this does not work right you have to say the variable name first equals and then whatever the value you want to assign it so the variable name is always on the left of the equal sign and the contents are always on the right. Okay, And then uh, again, we're just printing. The plus sign with printing, uh, if something is a string, is concatenation. And then if we don't have double quotes, so we have a number value, then Python treats that as an integer. And we can do basic math on integers. And then um, you can do all sorts of calculations if you want to. So for example, um, what you might want to do is ask the user for their name. And then we can save their name value into a name variable. And then you might want to ask their age. And then we can save their age into an integer value. So let's say that they're you know, 20. And then we can do some sort of math calculation like in 10 years, this is how old you'll be. And of course, if they're 20, then you can just add 10 to 20. And then you would get 30. And then you can print out that value. Um, not terribly useful, but it might be interesting for some different types of um, services if you're wanting to write that. Okay, so what I want you to do this week is play around with um, assigning values, um, uh, creating variables and assigning values to those variables, and then printing out um, something with concatenation, and then also doing uh, basically anything with your math calculations. Um, here, uh, we've done uh, addition, but there's also uh, all of the usual suspects for math. So I could do x, let's say z equals x times, and that's asterisk y, or z equals uh, x minus, minus y, or z equals x divided by y. So um, everything that you would expect, there's lots of different types of uh, uh, math calculations that are built into Python um, and that's why people like it a lot because um, there's lots of different ways that you can do different calculations using uh, this program which comes in very handy for things that I'll show you later okay so um, this week I want you to play around with that and make a small program and that will be it for this week okay. so thank you very much